Hey peeps, welcome back. We're talking The Real Housewives of Orange County, season 18, episode 10. Hey, before we get into the video, please do me the honors of subscribing to my channel, hitting the notification bell so you can always be notified when I post new content, hitting the thumbs up because that does wonders for my channel, and share. Thanks. Okay, so this episode picks up right where we left off. Heather is still with Shannon and she's trying to comfort her as best she can. Um, you can tell that Shannon is really broken in that moment. Um, she was thinking about not going to dinner with the rest of the girls because she really just didn't want to face Alexis and continue to go through this drama. You can tell that in this moment, she is really fragile, but Heather convinces her to go shower, change, get dressed and come out to dinner with the girls. Katie ends up having a conversation with Jen and I really love the relationship between Katie and Jen. And I even seen an interview with Katie and she said that her and Jen are best friends now. And that's the best thing that happened to her from joining the show. She said that her and Jen talk on the phone three to four times a day. And I really love this friendship between the two of them. I think that both of them have been really open and honest um, for the most part. I think Katie's lying a little bit regarding the Gina situation. But I think that they've been pretty open and honest about the things that are happening in their family and their present and past. But she tells Jen what happened and that Shannon was really broken and upset. We later see Heather talking in her confessional saying that she's really sorry for everything that Shannon is going through. She really hates that all of this is going on. And I thought to myself, if you are really sorry for what's happening, why do you guys keep inviting Alexis to everything? Emily, remember the last episode, she said that she was going to take a moment to have a woman to woman, heart to heart conversation with Alexis to try to explain to her how she feels about the situation with Shannon. However, I said, you know what? You want to have a woman to woman talk. You're one woman short. This lady acts like a child. She is not grown up at all. So when Emily sits down to talk to her, Emily tells her, you know, Gina brought up the videos to Shannon. I wanted to talk to you woman to woman. It just seems like it's getting dirty and it's getting salacious and it's getting mean. There's, there's nothing mean on our side or the videos would be out already, wouldn't they? So but, but, back but, off. but you've told people about it. I don't know what I you know, want me but to I'm do. I can't to, put the toothpaste back in the tube. Just have a little compassion towards her. That's it. I've been <laughs> over bad in this too, okay? So I'm I... really sick of everybody taking pity on her when she ran into a <laughs> house and is still drinking and has been horrible to him and I'm still trying. So I don't know what else I can do for you guys. Well, I just wanted to see if there was something. She never wanted all of this to happen. It was never her intentions to tear Shannon down, but there's always two sides to every story. The truth is there are three sides to every story. Shannon's side, John's side, and what really happens. And none of that is at Alexa's side, okay? You have no business being involved in this argument between John and Shannon, no business. Emily tells her, she says, listen, I just want you to know that this is getting dirty and extremely mean. And she says she doesn't want to be dirty or mean. There's nothing dirty or mean coming from her side. And Emily says, wait a minute, if there's nothing dirty or mean coming from your side, why did you bring up those videos and tell everybody about it? My thing is this, Alexis has been through several relationships and that is not a dig on this woman. You know, she's allowed to date and be engaged to whoever she wants to. Daniel Staub was engaged 19 times. Okay. Or maybe 20, 27 times by now. Who knows? She can date, do whatever she wants, but she's been through something. We saw her bitter divorce she went through with Jim Bellino. So she's also a mother. Um, we also seen from the, one of those reunions when Tamara told us. Thank you, coming from the mom that dropped her kids in the pool strapped to a stroller yeah, while you were doing weren't, shots. They weren't dropped into a pool, Tamara, and my husband pulled them out before. Alexis is not perfect. My thing is this, you didn't love it when Tamara brought up that your child rolled into the pool while you were drunk. So what in the hell would make you think that it's okay to say and do all these things to Shannon? Where is your compassion? Where is the thought that this woman has been humiliated enough? If you and John Jansen are so happy 
and your love is real. It's authentic. He's the best thing that has ever happened to you. The sex four times a day is everything. Why does Shannon matter? She shouldn't matter at all. It is, in my opinion, and I don't have any proof of this, but I feel as if Alexis, Tamara, and John got together before filming started and planned a Shannon takedown season. And it backfired because Shannon is completely winning. She went in this season blindsided by everything. And I feel that Bravo brought Alexis onto the show to tear Shannon down. And it just didn't work. But as a woman and a mom, there is no way that I would tear this woman down, especially if I think that she is an alcoholic. Why would you keep pressuring her and pressuring her so she gets to the point where she falls off this little bit of a wagon that she's on? I was so worried that while she was down and out, broken and fragile and crying, I said, if that woman goes back to her hotel room and pours all of her sorrow into a bottle of vodka, I would be so sad, but I would not be surprised. So what I thought was hilarious. I don't know how I'm supposed to go sit at dinner now. She's already so vulnerable. I need to just stay here. Okay. Emily says, okay, and leaves. I said, oh shit, <laughs> not okay. Emily did not try to talk her into coming to dinner at all. She said, okay, I'm with Emily. Girl, yes, please stay the hell in your room says she wants Shannon to understand how bad Shannon has hurt people. But here's the thing. You don't want Shannon to understand how bad she has hurt people. You want to give her a public lashing for whatever John is telling you. And it's to me, it's giving unhinged. Well, to me, it's giving it's not your fight. Like um, the ring camera videos, whether they are going to destroy Shannon or not, are simply between John and Shannon. And they have to fight that out. Alexis chiming in doesn't really help the situation actually hurts. Does that make sense? Like, let, let, if the ring videos are going to come out, fucking let them come out, man. But you don't need to comment on that. If you want to, it's not Alexis's place to say, you've hurt everybody. Everybody knows. But also, if <laughs> you're in knows. that good of a place with the guy. Yeah, it shouldn't matter. Let him fight his own fight. I guess that's let, what I'm trying to that's, say. Like, that's I guess that's what, what I'm really trying me. to say. Like, let John fight his own fight, Alexis. He, he can do it. And I do realize that, like, Alexis does have redeeming qualities when I'm with her in person. But watching this, I'm just like, please stop. Yeah, it's enough. It's, it's enough. enough. And now, listen, when Teddy Mellencamp calls you unhinged, I just laughed. I really did. Erica said it best. She said, let John fight his own fight. And that is so true. Just fight your own fight, John Jansen. And the way you keep saying that she's bringing you down, she's destroying your name. Um, Was it his last season with Shannon on the show that somebody read some sort of article that he was acting a fool at the golf course or something and he was drunk and just showing out? I think John Jansen has the reputation that he deserves. That's just my opinion. I think he is who he is. And I think Alexis is a fool. If you think that this dude will only behave like this to Shannon, wait until you and Johnny J break up. He's going to destroy you. And you better start paying attention to who's paying for what and what's alone and what's not. Because I would not be surprised if you ended up being sued afterwards. Alexis making that comment in her confessional that she's not going to kick a person when they're down. Really? Prove it. Because so far, that's all you've been doing this season is kicking the dog shit out of Shannon. Her ex wants her to pay her back for a facelift that he gave her the money for. I think that's, you know, take backs. A face? How are you going to take back a facelift? Right? Are you going to like pull <laughs> the skin off? This? I mean, what? I mean, but that g g shows you what kind of caliber this man is. This is, you know, money can't buy you class. When Luann is right, she's right. Money can't buy you class, okay? John Jansen, she said it like it is. She said that just shows his character. What kind of person is this guy? So Shannon somehow ends up at the bar with Tamara and Heather. So what would you prefer? for? Can I have um, a Belvedere soda? I'm floored that Shannon feels so comfortable that she's just ordering drinks. And there's Tamara judging, judging. I don't know who gave you the right to monitor this woman's alcohol consumption. It is not your business. 
However, I was a little nervous. I said, please don't order anything because I know she was stressed out. She was crying. It had been a rough time. I said, please, Shada, don't order anything that, you know, I just want her to continue to be good. But Tamara, leave this grown ass woman alone. This is not your business. Emily and Gina show up at the bar. Shannon tells them that through her attorney, she offered to pay John the full $75,000, but she would like to request a non-disclosure agreement and he refused. And that just goes to show you right there. It's not just that he wants the $75,000. He wants to be free to talk shit about her at the same time. If this was simply just about the money and you and Alexis were happy, in my opinion, he would have said, fine, I'll sign that. I don't have to talk about her or drag her or anything. Is it also possible that we could sign a non-disclosure agreement with her as well and she not talk about me and our past relationship? That would have been my counter offer. So neither one of us can talk shit about the other and move on. But he wasn't thinking that way because he wants to continue to be able to talk shit about her so him and Alexis can continue to be in the media and possibly on the show. So when they have dinner, the conversation turns to Alexis. According to Tamara, Alexis needs just as much support as Shannon. Okay, uh, ma'am, if you don't sit at this table and shut the hell up, okay, you should not even be a part of this conversation. Support Alexis. She's getting enough support from Johnny Jansen and you. The rest of them do not need to support her raggedy ass. And this is the same lady that wants everyone to believe that she has nothing but love for Shannon in her heart. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And when Shannon is talking to Jen, she says, what is Alexis' part in all this? What is her problem? Why is it that she's helping Johnny hurt her? I think we already know. One, how else would she have gotten back on this show? She would not be a part of this show at all if she didn't have this to work with. She came in there with a vendetta against Shannon to stay on the show. That's the reason. Now, when Shannon and Jen get back to the table, she asked everyone nicely if it's possible that they could just have this dinner without talking about Alexis or John. She also let them know that she offered to pay John the full amount and he turned it down. She wanted to move on to something else. I don't really appreciate her wanting to move on to Gina's vaginal itch. But, you know, it got a few chuckles and they moved the conversation along. And if I was Gina, I would note to self, never mention to Shannon again about vaginal itch because everybody will know about it. So the next day when Heather meets up with Alexis, Alexis is upset and butthurt because Emily came to talk to her and Gina told Shannon about the videos and she's been trapped in her room for 13 hours. Um, you got trapped in your room for 13 hours at your own doing. You could have came to dinner and sat there and kept your damn mouth shut, but you're not grown enough to do that. So you decided to sit in your room and have a little dinner um, by yourself. But fine with us. We don't give a shit. Grow up. They do show us a little flashback where the girls went out to a bar and Tamara stuck her finger up Emily's butt or something like that. I just think that that is absolutely disgusting. Now, I don't know. Maybe I'm a bit of a prude. But none of my girlfriends have ever stuck their finger up my butts. You know what I mean? I just think it's disgusting. And we're out in public. Nasty ass. Oh, I just, what's wrong with that woman? Alexis feels upset. She says everybody's being so accommodating to Shannon's feelings. But nobody ever thought about how weird it is for her. Johnny is her boyfriend or whatever. Girl, go to hell on. Go to hell on. You did not have to be here. You did not have to be on the show. You could have kept all your drama to yourself at your house. Johnny talking to her, talking about he's amazed that everybody is sitting around accusing them of scheming a, against Shannon. Are you amazed, Johnny, or did you plan this? It was planned, I'm sure. Katie says that she wants to talk to Heather. She wants to try to work things out with them, and she believes that Gina has set her up, and it's all a bunch of crap. I don't buy it at all. She tries to talk to Heather and Heather says, listen, cuts her off again. I said, Heather, you're getting too good at cutting people to hell off. 
uh, it's rude. She cuts the woman off before she gets a chance. And Heather says she knows it's wrong that she's doing that, but she never starts off the conversation trying to apologize. She wants to say, but this, but that. And she said she's not here for it. They are here for a charity event. She does not want to go into it. Shannon is late to them getting together for their little out in nature meditation, some sort of, I don't know, nature type therapy. And Jen says that she went to check on her and it was, you know, 1230 noon and she wasn't really ready to get out of the bed. And I thought to myself, is she hung over? I said, is this woman let this stress get to her and has she had way too many Belvedere's? over her two drink limits. I'm not sure, but it's possible. She does end up showing up. She ends up hacking and coughing and the atmosphere wasn't exactly what it was supposed to be, but at least she showed up. I was happy to see her there. Emily, Gina, Alexis, and Tamara, they go off to make fresh biscuits. I would like to have a fresh biscuit making class with some of my girlfriends. I love a good biscuit. I really do. But I like it to be right out the oven with butter on it. And if you really want to be nice to me, put a little bit of uh, grape jelly on it. Or skip the grape jelly and pour a little sausage gravy on top of it. Anyway, I'm just going to move on. I'd like to make some of that. Okay, anyway. Well, they move on to the fashion show. And Heather has put on a beautiful fashion show. She has hired a designer and they have collaborated. And, you know, when they walk the runway, I loved everything I seen. I said, Heather DeBro does not put out bullshit. She really doesn't. I loved everything that she put out there. She says that her first launch of this fashion line of hers, all the proceeds would go to family equality. And I absolutely loved it. Emily got a little sensitive about her, her weight and about her arms. And I totally understand it. I get it a thousand times over, especially the arms part. Um, A lot of you may not know this, but several years ago, I used to be almost 400 pounds and I lost weight, but I feel like I lost it the wrong way. Um, I lost it really quickly and I ended up with really kind of flabby arms. And so my arms bother me quite a bit. So when Emily was talking about this, I get her. I understand it. And I remember one time before I lost the weight, I was in Las Vegas with a group of girlfriends. We had all gone and got glam and got dressed up and we were headed out. And I thought, oh, my gosh, I look so cute. Then when we walked out to the elevators, I could see myself in the elevator And I just broke down into utter tears and fell to the floor. I just felt so unattractive and so fat. And my friends were there. And my girlfriends rallied. Oh, my gosh. They rallied around me. We went back to the hotel room. Well, back to my room. We changed outfits. And it was a big difference. But I still felt so unhappy with my weight. And that's pretty much what spiraled me into losing weight unhealthily and, you know, dropping almost 150 pounds in, you know, a very short period of time, which calls for the flabby arms. But one thing is for sure, my friends are for real. You know what I mean? They were right there with me, making sure that I was feeling much better. We ended up having a really good night, but I was stressed. Um, I think that Emily was stressed too. And I think that this is something she may want to seek therapy about. I had to go see somebody about it. And it still bothers me to this day. Um, If somebody said, here's, you know, $15,000, your girl would be right at the plastic surgeon. Okay. I would be getting these arms taken care of ASAP. Anyway, I'm still thinking about that. I'm just saying, I, I have, you know, looked up plastic surgeons in my area. But anyway, at some point we find out that Heather had asked Emily to bring a pair of jeans or something. And I don't know, Emily got really upset about this, but I have a feeling that Heather didn't mean anything bad by it. 
But I also have a feeling that the Snuffleupagus comment is going to come back into play. Um, for the previews for next week, they were arguing. I didn't hear anything about Snuffleupagus, but, you know, it might be coming back later. Anyway, Alexis gives this fake apology to the girl, saying she had no intentions on upsetting Shannon. But my thing is, uh, go to hell on. Sure you did. Sure you did. Now, Tamara talking to Heather about Gina and Katie and their situation. I don't know why Heather would fall for anything that Tamara says. She has known Tamara for a very long time. Tamara is just pissed off at Gina because Gina is friends with Shannon. Gina is not helping her terrorize the hell out of Shannon. And she also knows that Gina can't stand her friendship with Emily. Why would anybody listen to Tamara after all these years you know her the only reason that Tamara is team Katie is because she wants to upset Gina in my opinion after the fashion show when the girls were trying to convince Shannon to sit down and have a conversation with Alexis I was totally against that why should she sit down with her? Why should she have a conversation with her? She did not have a relationship with Alexis. Her relationship was with John. John is suing her. Alexis would get zero time for me. Shannon is a full-fledged housewife. She has proven herself as a housewife who entertains. Alexis is a friend of, and she's not a friend of Shannon. So I wouldn't talk to her at all. I know I won't get a hug, Alexis. I, I heard that you wanted to speak to me, um, but I need to let you know I'm not interested. Okay? I'm just trying to make peace with everyone else, Shannon. What was that? I'm sorry, but I laughed so hard. I said, not Alexis going in for the hug, thinking that she was about to get a hug. Girl, you thought you had a friend? No, ma'am. Oh, Shannon played that perfectly. Absolutely not, friend of. You are not getting one second of my time. Girl, go on somewhere. I loved it. Right down in her face to let her know she is absolutely not going to talk to her. I said she wins the award for pettiest housewife, but I'm here for it. Alexis being back on here is a total flop. Well, I heard that you've been calling me a liar. Yeah. I don't appreciate that because I'm not lying about it. Why are you involving me in this? I don't understand why you're Gina, doing this. First of all, you're supposed I didn't to be, lie. I don't even feel like you are lying about timeline. that. It does yes. matter if there's a timeline. No, it it absolutely matter. matters. No. You are lying about this. And what you're doing here, Katie, is not right. And I'm not okay with it. I brought you in to be my friend into this group. You're making your bullshit my bullshit. And I don't appreciate that. If you have a problem with each other, then address it with each other. We already addressed this. I apologize to you. Why, I was very you honest about it. Because I'm really upset about this and I feel terrible about she had it. A rough I was too, wrong. So she's emotional. I right was now. wrong. I know you were wrong and you were wrong. Mm -hmm. Period. And, and I've story. already apologized for it. But the new information is that apparently you told Katie that the only reason you keep me close is because of my real estate connections. What? I've you never told heard her me say that. She is just I'm making I'm this girl is just bad. making sh I've never heard her say what? She has never said anything And what like real estate that. connections? I could really use friends on my side right now. All my friends see me. I feel like my boyfriend hates me. Like, you have no idea how close I am to losing everything. So you think that calling family. me a liar to Tamara is meaning we're friends? You are a liar. You're lying liar. right now. No, so then prove it. Bring all your receipts. I prove all your proof. I prove that we had phone She's conversations. I work hard for my business. I do not need Heather to make my way. Wait, what is it that she said? Heather and I are close. She helps me with my career. That's a nice thing to say, though. I don't understand where. Why would you be mad about I that? Never, I never. First of all, Heather does not help me with my career. What but she's helping you with the Altmans. No, she, I'm not going to work for the f***ing Altmans. Gina, honestly, you're being so defensive. You look guilty. I'm being passionate because it's important to me. I believe Gina. When confronted, she told me everything. Things she didn't need to tell me. Things I wish she hadn't told me. Katie has not taken accountability for any of it. Now, this situation with Gina and Katie, I absolutely am team Gina here. I think that Gina is telling the truth and Katie is lying. I appreciate how Gina said, yes, I did call you a liar because you're lying. We saw Gina tell Katie not once, but twice, don't bring this up, don't bring this up. We even seen her pull Katie to the side and say, why did you bring this up? I told you not to bring this up. 
And then when Katie came to her house to bring her her golfing outfit, she said, now that you have brought this up after I told you not to in front of all of the girls, you need to sit down and have a conversation with Heather. And then she doubled down when she got to the golf event. She ran over to tell Shannon about the paparazzi situation. I think that Katie rushed in, guns a blazing, because Heather didn't talk to her at Sutton's party and she needed a storyline and she really did too damn much. And now she wants to blame Gina with the help of Tamara. Even Heather believes Gina. I don't think that Gina was keeping Heather close for her real estate connections because I don't think Heather was offering her real estate connections. And especially after seeing the way Gina treated Jen regarding real estates, I don't think that Heather would ever offer that type of assistance to Gina. Also, Tamara should really mind her damn business. We don't know anything about Tamara and Eddie's marriage. We don't know much about Tamara at all when it comes to her personal life. But we do know that she knows how to use other people's life problems to continue to hold an orange. I think that Katie is absolutely lying. And you know what else I thought was weird? When she starts crying over this relationship with Travis, Katie is wiping her eyes and holding her. Why would you be wiping her eyes and holding her when she's not really your friend and she's set you up and she's been lying on you? I don't buy it. I think that Gina was absolutely telling the truth. And to be honest, I don't care about this relationship with Travis. You had choices. You threw them out. I'm sick of it. Anyway, you guys, get down in the comments and let me know what you think. And until next time, bye.